వెల్కమ్ టు ద క్లాస్ అనే బైపోలార్ అండ్ యూనిపోలర్ పీడబ్ల్యూఎం ఇన్వర్టర్స్ టు ఎక్స్ప్లెయిన్ ద బైపోలార్ పీడబ్ల్యూఎం ఇన్వర్టర్ హియర్ వీ హ్యావ్ టేకెన్ ద సింగిల్ ఫేజ్ ఫుల్ బ్రిడ్జ్ ఇన్వర్టర్ ఇట్ ఈస్ కన్సిస్టింగ్ ఎ ఫోర్ కంట్రోల్ స్విచెస్ క్యూ వన్ క్యూ టూ క్యూ త్రీ క్యూ ఫోర్ ఇఫ్ క్యూ వన్ క్యూ టూ ఈజ్ ఆన్ ద అవుట్పుట్ వోల్టేజ్ బికమ్స్ ఎ పాజిటివ్ ఇఫ్ క్యూ త్రీ క్యూ ఫోర్ ఈజ్ ఆన్ ద అవుట్పుట్ వోల్టేజ్ బికమ్స్ ఎ నెగిటివ్ బట్ జ్యూరింగ్ ద పాజిటివ్ సైకిల్ ఆఫ్ ది ఇంటేజ్ ద లోడ్ ఈజ్ సబ్జెక్టెడ్ టు ద బోత్ పాజిటివ్ వోల్టేజ్ అండ్ నెగిటివ్ వోల్టేజ్ దాట్స్ ఫర్ యువర్ కాలింగ్ యాజ్ ఎ బై పోలర్ పీడబ్ల్యూ ఇన్వర్టర్ here the control switches are there from q1 to q4 these switches are on only when the base voltage is applied to the particular device how we are going to apply the base voltage means this is the comparator circuit or logic circuit the input of this block is the or circuit is the the input for this circuit is the reference wave and carrier wave the reference wave we have taken as sine wave the carrier wave we have taken as a triangular wave here the comparison is done between these two signals whenever the reference wave is greater than the carrier wave it is activating the base voltage generator of particular device so the respective device will be getting a base voltage now we are going to see how this base base voltage is applied to the control switches as well as the output voltage and output current wave this is the reference wave here we have taken the one cycle of the reference wave this is the carrier wave triangular wave we have taken as the carrier wave now the comparison is done between the carrier wave and reference wave whenever the reference wave is greater than the carrier wave the base voltage applied to the q1 and q2 if the carrier wave is greater than the reference wave then the base voltage is applied to the q3 and these are the base voltage applied to the q1 and q2 see here from 0 to this instant the reference wave is higher magnitude than the carrier wave so the base voltage is applied to the q1 and q2 again from this point to this point the reference wave is greater than the carrier wave so the base voltage is again applied to the q1 and q2 in this manner the base voltage is generated for the q1 and q2 for q3 and q4 the base voltage is generated only when the carrier wave is greater than the reference wave so that is happen in this duration now if we draw the output voltage wave form when the q1 q2 is on the output voltage is positive and q3 q4 is on the output voltage becomes a negative again here positive negative positive negative positive negative so the output voltage will be oscillating between the plus vs to minus vs the same manner here also if you draw the output voltage wave form if you observe this output voltage wave form this is the positive voltage this is the negative voltage during the positive cycle of the output voltage the magnitude of the negative voltage will be lesser during the negative cycle of the output voltage the magnitude of positive voltage will be lesser so the average output voltage in this duration is positive in this duration is the negative if we draw the fundamental component of the output voltage this is the fundamental component of the output voltage if we apply this type of voltage to the rl load the current lags the voltage that waveform we have shown here this is the current will be oscillating between the minimum to the maximum this is difference is nothing but a ripple in a output current when the q1 q2 is on the current is taken from the source in the same manner when the q3 q4 is on the current also will be taken from the source so the dc current will be also presenting a ripple this is the waveform for the dc current during positive cycle as well as the negative cycle if you observe that this dc current nothing but current which is given by the source it is a dc only but it is a oscillating between the minimum to the maximum nothing but a, this current waveform is consisting a second order harmonics now we are going to see the unipolar pwm inverter in case of unipolar pwm inverter here we have taken the two reference waves one is sinusoidal this is the reference one another one is outer phase for the this sine wave both are the reference waves the triangular wave we have taken as a carrier wave now we are comparing the this reference wave and this carrier wave based upon this we are generating the base voltage to the q1 and q2 these are the base voltages 
see here in this duration q1 reference wave is greater than the carrier wave so the base voltage is applied to the q1 q2 again here base voltage is applied here in this duration base voltage like that I have to develop the base voltage to the q1 and q2 now you compare the second sine wave and this triangular wave same logic then you generate a base voltage to the q3 and q4 so in this manner we are getting the base voltage to the q3 and q4 if you observe the some duration suppose in this pulse in this duration and in this duration in some duration four devices are conducting when the four devices are conducting means output voltage becomes a zero some duration only q1 q2 is conducting so the output voltage becomes a vs if you draw the output voltage waveform in this manner see here in the same manner second pulse also some duration both devices are conducting so the output voltage becomes a zero but some duration only q1 q2 is conducting here and here so we are getting the two pulses in this manner we can develop the output voltage as well as the negative voltage to the load if this voltage is applied to the rl load we are getting the this type of current waveform this current waveform lacks the voltage waveform the same manner if we draw the waveform for the dc current which is given by the source means this is the dc current which is given by the source in case of unipolar so why we are calling as unipolar pw inverter means during the positive cycle of the input voltage the load is subjected to the only the positive voltage it is not subjected to negative voltage so unipolar moreover the output voltage will be transition from the vs to the zero so the unipolar pw has a some advantages when compared to the bipolar pw inverter now we are going to compare the unipolar and bipolar pw inverters in case of unipolar pw inverter the output voltage will be transition from the vs to the zero suppose in case of load if we take any induction motor the insulation required for this motor will be lesser in case of a bipolar pw inverter the output voltage will be transition from the vs to the minus vs that means the transition voltage becomes a 2v so what are the induction motor we required here it requires a high amount of insulation rippling output current see here the rippling output current is lesser here the rippling output current is more so it requires a less amount of a filter to filter out the ripples but here in this case it requires a high amount of the filter to filter out the ripples electromagnetic interference the electromagnetic interference will be lesser in case of a unipolar in case of bipolar the electromagnetic interference will be more because the transition voltage will be lesser in case of unipolar in case of bipolar the transition voltage becomes a 2v the rippling dc current is more in case of a unipolar pw inverter so the capacitance required is lesser but here the capacitance required is more because the rippling will be very higher so these are the some of the advantages of a unipolar pw inverter when compared to the bipolar pw thank you very much for watching this video